is on now. So welcome everybody. This is a new human experience podcast. And today is July the 16th, 2020. Uh, the topic for this evening is family relations. So July, this is uh, the, the second week um, in July for this podcast. So July is the relationship month. Last week, I talked about our relationship with ourselves because I talked about that first because how we um, relate to ourselves really is the foundation of everything else. Today, I want to talk about family relationships because uh, family relationships, it is really through family relationship that we kind of get our initial programming. So what do I mean by our initial programming? Is we are we are not um, well. Hmm, let's let's put it that way. We come into this world, so we are souls. We are eternal souls, and we decide. Oh, let's um, let's we after we've kind of been in non-form uh, um, or just existing as just a our consciousness and just existing as a more etheric. Um, existence as a soul, then after a while we would want to have you know some physical, some really experience something very different. And so when our soul wants to take on a more um, physical, more um, material kind of um, existence then we would go and say oh okay as a soul i think this is where my development as a um, a soul is and um i would like to have let's say xyz experiences and growth points so that i can further my understanding of um the i would say or, or further um remembering who i truly am so then, so before we come in and take a body, we kind of um, have a list, a, kind of like a, a list of things we want to accomplish uh, on a soul level. And then, and then we would kind of take this shopping list and then go shop for a body and say, oh, okay, so let's um, find out, let's find where in the, the galaxy um, uh, we can find the kind of body um, and also the the setup or the playground and the the, the um, to get the all the setup all the programming and all that set up so that we can have the experience that are so needed in order for it to grow to the the next level for it to understand expand and um, be able to transcend what our current, what the, the soul's current understanding is. So then our soul would, um, in conjunction with, uh, or I should say that our soul usually don't decide that on their own, we usually would have some helpers, some other more advanced soul who's done this for a long time, who would be able to assist us and um, be able to say, hey, you know what, there's this, this playground called Earth and they're going through a very interesting time. And if, it's not going to be easy play though. But if you um, succeed there, then your soul is going to grow 10 times stronger and, and faster. Um, would that be something that's interests you? So. So if you're a really adventurous soul, you would say, ha, huh, okay, let me consider it. So tell me what is the setup? Well, you completely forget who you are, um, your parents. Sometimes they are really abusive. They, um, or, or your parents um, may die on you and you would be you know, left with um, you know, all sorts of different um, relatives who don't really care for you as much or some other setup. So you would, but then if all of this, that when you, when you um, 
get through all of this and still be able to remember that you are eternal soul just having a, a, um, a human experience and, and a temporary experience and be able to transcend all of the, um, I would say, emotional turmoil that you're going to go through, then your soul is going to be so much more advanced. And if you can succeed here, you can succeed anywhere. So, so that's, I'm, I'm dramatizing I'm, and I'm really playing with this, but you know, it's, it's actually not too far away from the, what actually happens is, is that it's, um, we have, before we actually come to earth, we actually were shown who our parents will be or potential. And it's not, it's usually not just one. You don't just have one choice. Usually have maybe at least, you know, four or five, maybe sometimes more, depending on um, how unique your, your set of um, criteria may be. So you usually have more than one, though. You usually has a few selections. So you would, you would actually be able to go through a simulation to say, oh, okay, if I go with, you know, um, parents, set of parents that's a then this may happen and then um and then if this happens then if a happened then you know um b would you may go with b and all the the different possibilities and probability and so then your soul with um counsel with all your um, spirit guides would be able to say, hmm, you know what? Yeah, I think um, I would pick this, this you know, set of parents who have these um, issues, which in turn will work really well with my particular soul because my soul likes to, it's a warrior soul. That's, that's um, for example, my soul, it's a warrior soul. If I am going to, a very, I would say, um, that when if there is everything is smooth, then my soul really don't grow as much. Whereas if I have to fight against something, if I have to, um, you know, be strong for someone else, then that's when like it will really bring up my my soul. What my soul can do that is that is. Um, play up with the strength of my soul so let's go with parents c a set of parents that's called c and then our soul actually would have some idea of what would happen um sometimes our parents maybe they had some um uh, they maybe they had a rough life so they may only learn some really I would say tough lessons and and really in their in their um, in their mind they really want to make sure that their kids their children would be equipped to handle the toughness that they're going to go into that they're going to get into when they actually start to become an adult and have to make their way. And then there are also some parents who do the complete opposite. They know how much, they know how competitive the, uh, the world is and they do their best to shield their children so that they, their children can have the, the longest time possible to be unspoiled by the, the, the cruelty of the world. However, um, it may or may not work with their, the, the soul of their child. So whatever the relationship it is that you have currently with your parents, let me um, just emphasize that, that um, it's, it's to understand that the relationship that you have with your parents and also with your siblings as well, they are there, they are in, like from your ego's point of view they are not family family is not relationship that you picked family is kind of the relationships that that is kind of 
set out for you that they are the um, kind of like the immovable rock that you have to navigate against. You have to, when you're young, because you still don't quite have the ability to fend for yourself yet. So you take on um, as much or as little, depending on what your soul has, has chosen to do, is to take on as much or as little of your parents' programming. So then, uh, and also with the, the, the programming and the um, conditioning of your siblings as well. So those are really the things that are so primary to you that it, they, form the, um, they form the basis of who you are, for better or worse. And what I'm trying to say here is that it's, it's not right, it's not wrong, it's just the way it is. And that the, the, um, the journey that we are here as a soul is really to work with something that is not of our own choosing. It's really the choosing of our soul. I, I say that it's not of our choosing, but actually it is still of our choosing, but more the choosing of our soul, of the etheric part of us. And when we come here and really experiencing the, 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 the choice of our soul, we, this is when we actually incarnate on earth. That's when the, the, the rubber hits the road. When you physically experience what it feels like to have strict parents or to have really loving, lenient, and allow you to do anything you want kind of parents, it's, it's not about the parents. It's about um, how, you, how your soul responds to your parents. This is really how you actually grow. This is what your soul has picked out for you as a growth point. And there is no right and also no wrong about it. And to understand, to come to terms with this primary set of relationships is really the work that we do in order to understand our soul, to, to start to, as a, a body, as a um, the material or the vessel part of who you are is to start to integrate with the immaterial, the etheric part of you. You, you may not like what your soul has picked for you. However, if you keep on, um, I would say if you keep on resisting what the path that your soul has picked out for you, then um, you may not have as much success. And the point here is that at some point, at some point, your, your soul would have some idea of um, what is the best way for you. Sometimes it is really to put so much pressure and so much um, I would say so much hardship in your way that it has, you have to bring out the best and the, 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 the most um, resilient part of you. And that may be what your soul wants you to experience. So the idea is for, the, for all parts of yourself, the soul part, the, um, the, the soul, meaning the, the cosmic part of you, and also the earthbound um, entity part of your soul to both work together with the, the, the vessel, the, the part of you that actually experience from your five senses to somehow come to terms with this situation and then start to move forward in alignment with each other. So ultimately what our soul is after 
is for us really to go beyond our initial programming. Perhaps in, um, I would say, perhaps maybe 50 years ago or 100 years ago, it's not the case. Whereas now, because we are in transition between um, third dimension to fifth dimension. So currently, I'm speaking currently, it is ultimately, it is the, the, the direction of our soul is for us to go beyond our initial programming. It's really not so much to explore what our body experiences, it's really try to understand which way our soul really wants us to develop and to start to embody the, the I would say the direction of the soul. And when we can do that in, um, in alignment and create that alignment, then it is, um, then we would actually, our soul would start to work with us much easier and, and be able to um, start to part the, the, the sea for us. So I say this not to diminish our, hum, uh, the, the humanity part of us and not to suggest that there's anything wrong with our family origin. There's nothing wrong with that, nothing wrong with any experience, whether your experience with your, your family, whether your parents or your siblings, whether they are good or bad, whether they are um, harmonious or not or whether they are always the thorn uh, on, of your side. There's nothing wrong with that. It is what your soul came here to experience. Um, tough as that may be, why would any soul wants to do that? Well, it is, there is no such thing as um, a right way for the soul. It is really what the soul needs in order for it to break through to the next dimension. And we are, because um, the breaking through to the, uh, the next dimension is really to remember that we're not just this body. And even though we um, live in this body, we are not just the product of our family. We're not just the product of our family, that there is something beyond us that is internal and it is always pointing us in the direction that we needed to go, um, albeit very, sometimes very subtly and sometimes not so subtly. And learning how to work together with our body is the first step to learning how to work together with other people as well, because um, oneness, there are many levels of oneness. The first level of oneness, um, so fifth dimension is, is about oneness. Oneness is a fifth dimension um, concept, it is one of the, the major concepts that it may take us um, a while to really get at. Because when we are in our body, we, we only observe our uniqueness. We only observe our separation from other people. And we actually believe that we are separated from our soul, from the parts of us that we cannot touch, that we can only um, have glimpses of if we really start to observe how we are or meditate on it and quiet our mind. And so the, the first level of oneness is really to, is to create that oneness between the etheric part of us and the physical part of us and be able to unify that so that all parts of us is um, supporting the other parts where our, our soul does not diminish the, the physical experience and the physical experience does not um, take away from our spiritual nature. And when the two, when all parts of us can march in the same direction, then we start to go on to the next level of oneness, which is to start to 
look at each one of the, the other people around us, whether they are family or not, is to be able to look into someone else's eyes, someone else with a different body than us, and be able to see the similarities more than we um, start to or focus on the, the differences. And oneness does not, I mean, when I say oneness, I, I, I'm not trying to say that we are all the same. And far from it, it oneness, oneness is a balancing act. On the one hand, individuality must be respected because our soul, our um, etheric part of us, the, the higher self or the, the ultimate creator has picked the direction of diversity. And the more we can experience our, our life, our creator source, beingness in as, as different, as much diversity, and be able to hold all of the, the, the diversity on one hand and be able to also recognize that all of that diversity, that there is, um, they all come from one source. And to be able to hold both the diversity and the individuality on one hand and the oneness and the sameness on the other hand without sacrificing anything, without compromising anything. It is, and, and that is really the, um, the journey that we are going on, that our soul is going on on, on planet Earth is to start to find that balance and lift that balance and embody that balance, not just be able to understand it when we are, um, when we are living as a soul, but be able to understand it as well when we are living in our body and from our body. So regaining our soul's true essence beyond our family relationships conditioning is really part of the soul journey. And, and yes, I know it's, it may not sound very easy. However, um, I just want to offer that. that that's why um, oneness and love is so much a part of the fifth dimension. The idea is that if you love yourself in such a way that you can honor your own uniqueness without taking away from someone else and when you love yourself and those around you unconditionally that is how you can actually is the best way uh, it's the, the the most incentive for you to be able to strike just the right balance so that you're not just um, trying to find a quick solution because um, spiritual truth is not a quick solution um, kind of deal. It is, um, I would say, it's, it's much easier to say, okay, this I know better and I'm going to dictate and everyone is going to listen to me and anybody who don't agree with me off the head. I mean, that, that's what we've been going through for uh, in in. In, in really uh, two dimension and three dimension. That's how we resolve the um, difference between people. We fight, we fight to the death. A lot of the times there's so much violence. And when we go into the fifth dimension, violence is not um, feasible anymore because, we, because when oneness, when we really embrace oneness, then we start to appreciate that when you, when you look for easy solution, when you, even with the best of intention, I know better and you are, you know, you're young, you don't know, so just do what I say and don't argue. That kind of mentality does not work. It, um, it actually takes away from our soul because our body may be young 
However, the soul, the, the etheric part of us, is eternal. It, it is beyond wise. There are some souls who, even though they, they just, they're just maybe two months old or two years old, but they have lived eons. They have been there for as long as the soul has memory. So if you just look at the, the physical part of it, then you missed all of the wisdom that hides behind that is the soul can have access to if only that part of, if only they would um, honor the eternal part of them. So the quickest solution may not always be the best one. So in summary then, I want to say that what is family relationship? And, and maybe one of the questions you need to ask yourself is, how do you like, how do you like your family relationships right now? How do, is that a, a source of happiness for you or is that a source of um, heartache for you? And uh, there is no, no good answer. There is no bad answer. Is that what, what our family relationships truly is? It's really a trail of breadcrumbs that our soul has loved for us. For us to untangle and when we start to do the work of waking up to the eternal part of us and to start to not just um, project onto our unsuccessful relationships with our family and be able to say that enough is enough i am no longer a child and that um, i remember that my soul, I remember my soul and I remember that I am more than this body. And when we can start to wake up to our soul parts, then all the immovable mountains that we face until we remember that, when we can remember that we are the creator, and we are actually the creator that picked those parents, that picked those siblings, that placed those immovable mountains there. And once we realize that, then we realize that we can graduate to the next level. And what is the next level? That's really when you learn to fly over those mountains or maybe simply to decide to shift to another parallel reality where mountains are made of marshmallows. So whatever the, the next level is for you, I don't know. It is really your soul's creation with yourself. Sometimes it may be to just um, be with your family and smile and give them a, a stupid smile and just you know enjoy their company for as much as possible. Or sometimes it may be to avoid them as much as possible and but still... Um, not try to give away your power because you are the creator of all that. And when you come to terms with that, then all the anxiety, all, all of that, is, it's easy for you to drop it. When you can drop it, then you can become the adult because it is when like all of those um, emotional um, relationships or, uh, that you have set up, they all actually began when you were a child, when you are helpless, when you needed someone else to take care of you, when you cannot provide for yourself. However, that no longer is true you are an adult at some point you have to simply say enough is enough i'm an adult now i'm an adult i am the creator i'm actually the person who picked those parents i'm actually the parent the the, the person who decided to have those experiences whether they are good or bad pleasant or not so pleasant that i am responsible and because i am responsible I can change them. I can shift them to whatever it is that I like. And that is all I would like to share with you 
this evening. 